Book 6 The Book of Fate Canto 1 The Word of Fate In silent bounds bordering the mortal's range crossing a wide expanse of brilliant peace Narad the heavenly sage from paradise came chanting through the large and lustrous air attracted by the golden summer earth that lay beneath him like a glowing bowl tilted upon a table of the gods turning as if moved round by an unseen hand to catch the warmth and blaze of a small sun he passed from the immortal happy path to a world of toil and quest and grief and hope to these rooms of the seesaw game of death with life across an intangible border of soul space he passed from mind into material things amid the inventions of the inconscient self and the workings of a blind somnambulist force below him circling burned the myriad sun he bore the ripples of the etheric sea a primal air brought the first joy of touch a secret spirit drew its mighty breath contracting and expanding this huge world in its formidable circuit through the void the secret might of the creative fire displayed its triple power to build and form its infinitesimal wave sparks weaving dance its nebulous units grounding shape and mass magic foundation and pattern of a world its radiance bursting into the light of stars he felt a sap of life a sap of death into solid matter dense communion plunging and its obscure oneness of forms he shared with a dumb spirit identity he beheld the cosmic being at his task his eyes measured the spaces gauged the depths his inner gaze the movements of the soul he saw the eternal labor of the gods and looked upon the life of beasts and men a change now fell upon the singer's mood a rapture and a pathos moved his voice he sang no more of light that never wanes and oneness and pure everlasting bliss he sang no more the deathless heart of love his chant was a hymn of ignorance and fate he sang the name of vishnu and the birth and joy and passion of the mystic world and how the stars were made and life began and the mute region stirred with the throb of a soul he sang the inconscient and its secret self its power omnipotent knowing not what it does all shaping without will or thought or sense its blind unerring occult mystery and darkness yearning towards the eternal light and love that broods within the dim abyss and waits the answer of the human heart and death that climbs to immortality he sang of the truth that cries from night's blind deeps and the mother wisdom 
hid in nature's breast and the idea that through her dumbness works and the miracle of her transforming hands of life that slumbers in the stone and sun and mind subliminal in mindless life and the consciousness that wakes in beasts and men he sang of the glory and marvel still to be born of godhead throwing off at last its veil of bodies made divine and life made bliss immortal sweetness clasping immortal might heart sensing heart thought looking straight at thought and the delight when every barrier falls and the transfiguration and the ecstasy and as he sang the demons wept with joy foreseeing the end of their long dreadful task and the defeat for which they hope in vain and glad release from their self-chosen doom and return into the one from whom they came he who has conquered the immortal seed came down to men on earth the man divine as darts a lightning streak a glory fell nearing until the rapt eyes of the sage looked out from luminous cloud and strangely limbed his face a beautiful mask of antique joy appearing in light descended where arose king aswapati's palace to the winds in madra flowering up in delicate stone there welcomed him the sage and thoughtful king at his side a creature beautiful passionate wise aspiring like a sacrificial flame skyward from its earth seat through luminous air queen proud the human mother of savitri there for an hour untouched by the earth siege they ceased from common life and care and sat inclining to the high and rhythmic voice while in his measured chant the heavenly seer spoke of the toils of men and what the gods strive for on earth and joy that throbs behind the marvel and the mystery of pain he sang to them of the lotus heart of love with all its thousand luminous buds of truth which quivering sleeps veiled by apparent things it trembles at each touch it strives to wake and one day it shall hear a blissful voice and in the garden of the spouse shall bloom when she is seized by her discovered lord a mighty shuddering coil of ecstasy crept through the deep heart of the universe out of her matter stupor her mind's dreams she woke she looked upon god's unveiled face even as he sang and rapture stole through earth time and caught the heavens came with a call of hoofs as of a swift heart hastening savitri a radiant tread glimmered across the floor a happy wonder in her fathomless gaze changed by the halo of her love she came her eyes rich with a shining mist of joy as one who comes from a heavenly embassy discharging the proud mission of her heart one carrying the sanction of the gods to her love and its luminous 
eternity. She stood before her mighty father's throne and eager for beauty on discovered earth transformed and new in her heart's miracle light saw like a rose of marvel worshipping the fire tinged sweetness of the son of heaven he flung on her his vast immortal look his inner gaze surrounded her with its light and raining back knowledge from his immortal lips he cried to her who is this that comes the bride the flame born and round her illumined head pouring their light her hymeneal pomps move flashing about her from what green glimmer of glades retreating into dewy silences or half seen verge of waters moon betrayed brings thou this glory of enchanted eyes earth has gold hued expanses shadowy hills that cowl the dreaming phantom heads in night and guarded in a cloistral joy of woods screened banks sink down into felicity seized by the curved incessant yearning hands and ripple the passion of the upgazing stream amid cool lips murmurs of its pure embrace they lose their souls on beds of trembling reeds and all these are mysterious presences in which some spirits immortal bliss is felt and they betray the earth born heart to joy there has thou paused and marveling born eyes unknown or heard a voice that forced thy life to strain its rapture through thy listening soul or if my thought could trust this shimmering gaze it would say thou hast not drunk from an earthly cup but stepping through azure curtains of the noon thou wast surrounded on a magic verge in brighter countries than man's eyes can bear assailed by trooping voices of delight and seized mid a sunlit glamour of the boughs in fairy woods led down the gleaming slopes of ganda madan where the apsaras roam thy limbs have shared the sports which none has seen and in god haunts thy human footsteps strayed thy mortal bosom quivered with god speech and thy soul answered to a word unknown what feet of gods what ravishing flutes of heaven have thrilled high melodies round from near and far approaching through the soft and reveling air which still surprised thou hearest they have fed thy silence on some red strange ecstasied fruit and thou hast trod the dim moon peaks of bliss reveal o winged with light whence thou hast flown hastening bright hued through the green tangled earth thy body rhythmical with the spring birds call the empty roses of thy hands are filled only with their own beauty and the thrill of a remembered clasp and in thee glows a heavenly jar thy firm deep honeyed heart new brimming with a sweet and nectarous wine thou hast not spoken with the kings of pain life perilous music rings yet to thy ear far melodied 
Rapid and grand, a centaur song, or soft as water, plashing mid the hills, or mighty as a great chant of many winds. Moon bright, thou livest in thy inner bliss. Thou comest like a silver deer through groves of coral flowers and buds of glowing dreams, or fleest like a wind goddess through leaves, or roamest, O ruby-eyed and snow-winged dove, flitting through thickets of thy pure desires in the unwounded beauty of thy soul. These things are only images to thy earth, but truest truth of that which in thee sleeps. For such is thy spirit, a sister of the gods, thy earthly body, lovely to the eyes, and thou art kin in joy to heaven's sun. O thou who hast come to this great perilous world, now only seen to the splendor of thy dreams, where hardly love and beauty can live safe, thyself a being dangerously great, a soul alone in a golden house of thought, has lived walled in by the safety of thy dreams. On heights of happiness, leaving doom asleep, who hunts unseen the unconscious lives of men. If thy heart could live locked in thy deal's gold, as high, as happy might thy waking be. If for all time doom could be left to sleep. He spoke, but held his knowledge back from words. As a cloud plays with lightning's vivid laugh, but still holds back the thunder in its heart, only he let bright images escape. His speech, like glimmering music, wailed his thoughts. As a wind flatters the bright summer air, pitiful to mortals, only to them it spoke of living beauty and of present bliss. He hid in his all-knowing mind the rest. To those who hearkened to his celestial voice, the veil heaven's pity throws on future pain, the immortal sanction seemed of endless joy. But Aswapati answered to the seer, his listening mind had marked the dubious close, an ominous shadow felt behind the words, but calm like one, Whoever sits facing fate, here mid the dangerous contours of earth's life, he answered, covered forth with guarded speech. O deathless sage, who knowest all things here, if I could read by the ray of my own wish, through the carved shield of symbol images, which thou hast thrown before thy heavenly mind, I might see the steps of a young godlike life, happily beginning, luminous eyed on earth, between the unknowable and the unseen, born on the borders of two wonder worlds. It flames out symbols of the infinite and lives in a great light of inner suns. For it has read and broken the wizard seals. It has drunk of the immortal's wells of joy. It has looked across the jewel bars of heaven. It has entered the aspiring secrecy. It sees beyond terrestrial common things and communes with the powers that builds the worlds. Till through the shining gates and mystic streets of the city of lapis lazuli and pearl, proud deeds step forth, a rank and march of gods. Although in pauses of our human lives, earth keeps for man 
some short and perfect hours when the inconstant tread of time can seem the eternal moments which the deathless live yet rare that touch upon the mortal's world hardly a soul and body here are born in the fierce difficult movement of the stars whose life can keep the paradisal note its rhythm repeat the many tone melody tirelessly throbbing through the rapturous air caught in the song that sways the apsara's limbs when she floats gleaming like a cloud of light a wave of joy on heaven's moonstone floor behold this image cast by light and love a stanza of the order of the gods perfectly rhymed a pillared ripple of gold her body like a brimmed pitcher of delight shaped in a splendor of gold colored bronze as if to seize earth's truth of hidden bliss dream made illumined mirrors are her eyes draped subtly in a slumberous fringe of jet retaining heaven's reflections in their depths even as a body such is she within heaven's lustrous mornings gloriously recur like drops of fire upon a silver page in a young spirit yet untouched with tears all beautiful things eternal seem and new to virgin wonder in a crystal soul yan changing blue reveals its spacious thought marvelous the moon floats on through wandering skies earth flowers spring up and laugh at time and death the charm mutations of the enchanter life race like bright children past the smiling earth if but this joy of life could last not pain throw its bronze note into her rhythm days behold her finger with the prescient gaze and let thy blessing chant that this fair child shall pour the nectar of a sorrowless life around her from a lucid heart of love heal with her bliss the tired breast of earth and cast like a happy snare felicity as grows the great and golden bounteous tree flowering by alakananda's murmuring waves where with enamored speed the waters run lisping and babbling to the splendor of morn and cling with lyric laughter round the knees of heaven's daughters dripping magic rain pearl bright from moon gold limbs and cloudy hair so are her dawns like jeweled leaves of light so cast she her felicity on men a flame of radiant happiness she was born and surely will that flame set earth alight doom surely will see her pass and say no word but too often hear the careless mother leaves her chosen in the envious hands of fate the harp of god falls mute its call to bliss this courage fails mid earth's unhappy sound the strings of the siren ecstasy cry not here or soon are silenced in the human heart of sorrow songs we have enough bid once her glad and griefless days bring heaven here or must fire always test the great of soul along the dreadful causeway of the gods 
armored with love and faith and sacred joy, a traveler to the Eternal's house, once let unwounded pass a mortal life. But Narad answered not, silent he sat, knowing that words are vain and fate is Lord. He looked into the unseen with seeing eyes, then dallying with the mortal's ignorance, like one who knows not, questioning, he cried, On what high mission went her hastening wheels? Whence came she with this glory in her heart, and paradise made visible in her eyes? What sudden God has met, what face supreme? To whom the king, the red Ahsoka, watched her going forth, which now sees her return. Risen into an air of flaming dawn, like a bright bird, tired of her lonely branch, to find her own lord, since to her on earth he came not yet, this sweetness wandered forth, leaving her way with the beat of her rapid wings. Led by a distant call, her vague swift flight treaded the summer bones and sunlit land. The happy rest her burden lashes keep, and these charmed guardian lips hold treasured still. Virgin who comest perfected by joy, reveal the name thy sudden heartbeats learn. Whom hast thou chosen kingliest among men? And Savitri answered with her still calm voice, as one who speaks beneath the eyes of fate, Father and King, I have carried out thy will. One whom I sought, I found in distant lands. I have obeyed my heart, I have heard its call. On the borders of a dreaming wilderness, mid Shalwa's giant hills and brooding woods, in his thatched hermitage, Dumatsena dwells, blind exiled outcast, once a mighty king. The son of Dumatsena, Satyavan, I have met on the wild forest's lonely verge. My father, I have chosen, this is done. Astonished, all sat silence for a space. Then Aswapati looked within and saw a heavy shadow float above the name, chased by a sudden and stupendous light. He looked into his daughter's eyes and spoke, Well hast thou done, and I approve thy choice. If this is all, then all is surely well. If there is more, then all can still be well. Whether it seem good or evil to men's eyes, only for good the secret will can work. Our destiny is written in double terms. Through nature's contraries we draw nearer God. Out of the darkness, we still grow to light. Death is our road to immortality. Cry woe, cry woe, the world's lost voices wail, yet conquers the eternal good at last. Then might the sage have spoken, but the king in haste broke out and stayed the dangerous word. O singer, of the ultimate ecstasy. Lend not a dangerous vision to the blind, because by native right thou hast seen clear. Impose not on the mortal's tremulous breast the dire ordeal that foreknowledge brings. Demand not now the godhead in our acts. Here are not happy peaks the heaven-nymphs roam, or Koilas 
or Vaikuntha's starry stair, abrupt jagged hills only the mighty climb, are here where few dare even think to rise. Far voices call down from the dizzy rocks, till slippery precipitous are the paths. Too hard the gods are with man's fragile race. In their large heavens they dwell exempt from fate, and they forget the wounded feet of man, his limbs that faint beneath the whips of grief, his heart that hears the tread of time and death. The future's road is hid from mortal sight. He moves towards a veiled and secret face. To light one step in front is all his hope, and only for a little strength he asks to meet the riddle of his shrouded fate. Awaited by a vague and half-seen force, aware of danger to his uncertain hours, he guards his flickering yearnings from her breath. He feels not when the dreadful fingers close around him with the grasp none can elude. If thou canst lose her grip, then only speak. Perhaps from the iron snare there is escape. Our mind perhaps deceives us with its words and gives the name of doom to our own choice. Perhaps the blindness of our will is fate. He said, and Narad answered not the king. But now the queen, alarmed, lifted her voice. O seer, thy bright arrival has been timed to this high moment of a happy life. Then let the speech benign of griefless fears confirm the blithe conjunction of two stars and sanction joy with thy celestial voice. Here drag not in the peril of our thoughts. Let not our words create the doom they fear. Here is no cause for dread, no chance for grief to raise her ominous head and stare at love. A single spirit in a multitude, happy is Satyavan mid earthly men, whom Savitri has chosen for her mate, and fortunate the forest hermitage, where leaving her palace and riches and a throne, my Savitri will dwell and bring in heaven. Then let thy blessing put the immortal seal on these bright lives, unstained felicity, pushing the ominous shadow from their days. Too heavy falls a shadow on man's heart. It dares not be too happy upon earth. It dreads the blow, dogging too vivid joys, a lash unseen in fate's extended hand, the danger lurking in fortune's proud extremes, and irony in life's indulgent smile, and trembles at the laughter of the gods. Or if crouches unseen a panther doom, if wings of evil brood above that house, then also speak that we may turn aside and rescue our lives from hazard of wayside doom and chance entanglement of an alien fate. And Narad slowly answered to the queen, What help is in prevision to the driven? 
Safe doors cry opening near, the doomed pass on. A future knowledge is an added pain, a torturing burden and a fruitless light on the enormous scene that fate has built. The eternal poet, universal mind, has paged each line of his imperial act, invisible the giant actor's dread, and man lives like some secret player's mask. He knows not even what his lips shall speak, for a mysterious power compels his steps, and life is stronger than his trembling soul. None can refuse what the stark force demands. Her eyes are fixed upon her mighty aim. No cry or prayer can turn her from her path. He has leaped an arrow from the bow of God. His words were theirs who live unforced to grieve and help by calm the swaying wheels of life and the long restlessness of transient things and the trouble and passion of the unquiet world. As though her own bosom were pierced, the mother saw the ancient human sentence strike her child. Her sweetness that deserved another fate, only a larger measure given of tears. Aspiring to the nature of the gods, a mind proof armored, mailed in mighty thoughts, a will entire couchant behind wisdom's shield, though to still heavens of knowledge she had risen, though calm and wise and Aswapati's queen, human was she still and opened her doors to grieve. The stony eyed injustice she accused of the marble goddess of inflexible law, nor sought the strength extreme adversity brings to lives that stand erect and front the world power. Her heart appealed against the impartial judge, taxed with perversity the impersonal one. Her tranquil spirit she called not to her aid, but as a common man beneath his load grows faint and breathes his pain in ignorant words, so now she arraigned the world's impassive will. What stealthy doom has crept across her path, emerging from the dark forest's sullen heart? What evil thing stood smiling by the way and wore the beauty of the Shalva boy. Perhaps he came an enemy from her past, armed with a hidden force of ancient wrongs, himself unknowing and seized her unknown. Here dreadfully entangled love and hate, meet us blind wanderers mid the perils of time. Our days are links of a disastrous chain. Necessity avenges casual steps. Old cruelties come back unrecognized. The gods make use of our forgotten deeds. Yet all in vain the bitter law was made. Our own minds are the justicers of doom. For nothing have we learned but still repeat our stark misuse of self and others' souls. There are dire alchemies of the human heart, and fallen from his ethereal element, love darkens to the spirit of nether gods. The dreadful angel, angry with his joys, woundingly sweet he cannot yet forgo, is pitiless to the soul, his gaze disarmed, 
he visits with his own pangs his quivering prey forcing us to cling enamored to his grip as if in love with our own agony this is one poignant misery in the world and grief as other lassoes for our life our sympathies become our torturers strength have i my own punishment to bear knowing it just but on this earth perplexed smitten in the sorrow of scourged and helpless things often it faints to meet other suffering eyes we are not as the gods who know not grief and look impassive on a suffering world calm they gaze down on the little human scene and the short lived passion crossing mortal heart an ancient tale of woe can move us still we keep the ache of breasts that breathe no more we are shaken by the sight of human pain and share the miseries that others feel ours not the passionless lids that cannot age too hard for us is heaven's indifference our own tragedies are not enough for us all pathos and all sufferings we make ours we have sorrow for a greatness passed away and feel the touch of tears in mortal things even a stranger's anguish rends my heart and this o narad is my well loved child hide not from us our doom if doom is ours this is the worst and unknown face of fate a terror ominous mute felt more than seen behind our seat by day our couch by night a fate lurking in the shadow of our hearts the anguish of the unseen that waits to strike to know is best however hard to bear then cried the sage piercing the mother's heart forcing to steal the will of savitri his words set free the spring of cosmic fate the great gods use the pain of human hearts as a sharp axe to hew the cosmic road they squander lavishly men's blood and tears for a moment's purpose in their fateful work this cosmic nature's balance is not ours nor the mystic measure of her need and use a single word lets loose vast agencies a casual act determines the world's fate so now he set free destiny in that hour the truth thou hast claimed i give to thee the truth a marvel of the meeting earth and heavens is he whom savitri has chosen mid men his figure is the front of nature's march his single being excels the works of time a sapphire cutting from the sleep of heaven delightful is the soul of satyavan a ray out of the rapturous infinite a silence waking to a hymn of joy a divinity and kingliness gird his brow his eyes keep a memory from a world of bliss as brilliant as a lonely moon in heaven gentle like the sweet bud that spring desires pure like a stream that kisses silent banks he takes with bright surprise spirit and sense a living not of golden paradise a blue immense he leans to the longing world time's joy borrowed out of eternity a star of splendor or a rose of bliss 
in him soul and nature equal presences balance and fuse in a wide harmony the happy in their bright ether have not hearts more sweet and true than this of mortal make that takes all joy as the world's native gift and to all gives joy as the world's natural right his speech carries a light of inner truth and a large eyed communion with the power in common things has made veilless his mind a seer in earth shapes of godless deity a tranquil breadth of sky windless and still watching the world like a mind of unplumbed thought a silent space musing and luminous uncovered by the morning to delight a green tangle of trees upon a happy hill made into a murmuring nest by southern winds these are his images and parallels his kin in beauty and in depth his peers a will to climb lifts a delight to live heaven's height companion of earth beauty's charm an aspiration to the immortal's air lain on the lap of mortal ecstasy his sweetness and his joy attract all hearts to live with his own in a glad tenancy his strength is like a tower built to reach heaven a godhead quarried from the stones of life o loss if death into its elements of which his gracious envelope was built shatter this vase before it breathes its sweets as if earth could not keep too long from heaven a treasure thus unique loaned by the gods a being so rare of so divine a make in one brief year when this bright hour flies back and perches careless on a branch of time this sovereign glory ends heaven lent to earth this splendor vanishes from the mortal sky heaven's greatness came but was too great to stay twelve swift winged months are given to him and her this day returning satyavan must die a lightning bright and nude the sentence fell but the queen cried vain then can be heaven's grace heaven mocks us with the brilliance of its gifts for death is a cup bearer of the wine of too brief joy held up to mortal lips for a passionate moment by the careless gods but i reject the grace and the mockery mounting thy car go forth o savitri and travel once more through the peopled lands alas in the green gladness of the woods thy heart has stooped to a misleading call choose once again and leave this fated head death is the gardener of this wonder tree love's sweetness sleeps in his pale marble hand advancing in a honeyed line but closed a little joy would buy too bitter an end plead not thy choice for death has made it vain thy youth and radiance were not born to lie a casket void dropped on a careless soil a choice less rare may call a happier fate but savitri answered from her violent heart her voice was calm her face was fixed like steel once my heart chose and chooses not again the word i have spoken can never be erased it is written in the record book of god 
the truth once uttered from the earth's air effaced by mind forgotten sounds immortally forever in the memory of time once the dice fall thrown by the hand of fate in an eternal moment of the gods my heart has sealed its troth to satyavan its signature adverse fate cannot efface it seal not fate nor death nor time dissolve those who shall part who have grown one being within death's grip can break our bodies not our souls if death take him i too know how to die let fate do with me what she will or can i am stronger than death and greater than my fate my love shall outlast the world doom falls from me helpless against my immortality fate's law may change but not my spirit's will an adamant will she cast her speech like bronze but in the queen's mind listening her words rang like the voice of a self-chosen doom denying every issue of escape to her own despair answer the mother maid as one she cried who in her heavy heart labors amid the sobbing of her hopes to wake a note of help from sadder strings o child in the magnificence of thy soul dwelling on the border of a greater world and dazzled by the superhuman thoughts thou lendest eternity to a mortal hope here on this mutable and ignorant earth who is the lover and who is the friend all passes here nothing remains the same none is for any on this transient globe he whom thou lovest now a stranger came and into a far strangeness shall depart his moments part once done upon life stage which for a time was given him from within to other scenes he moves and other players and laughs and weeps mid faces new unknown the body thou hast loved is cast away amidst the brute unchanging stuff of worlds to indifferent mighty nature and becomes crude matter for the joy of others lives but for our souls upon the wheel of god forever turning they arrive and go married and sundered in the magic round of the great dancer of the boundless dance our emotions are but high and dying notes of his wild music changed compellingly by the passionate movements of a seeking heart in the inconstant links of our with our to call down heaven's distant answering song to cry to an unseized bliss is all we dare one seized we lose the heavenly music sense too near the rhythmic cry has fled or failed all sweetnesses are baffling symbols here love dies before the lover in our breast our joys are perfumes in a brittle vase oh then what wreck is this upon time sea to spread life sails to the hurricane desire and call for pilot the unseeing heart o child will thou proclaim will thou then follow against the law that is the eternal will the autarchy of the rash titan's mood to whom 
His own fierce will is the one law in a world where truth is not, nor light, nor God. Only the gods can speak what now thou speakst. Thou who art human, think not like a god, for man below the god, above the brute, is given the calm reason as his guide. He is not driven by an unthinking will, as are the actions of the bird and beast. He is not moved by stark necessity, like the senseless motion of inconscient things. The giants and the titans' furious march climbs to usurp the kingdom of the gods or skirts the demon magnitudes of hell. In the unreflecting passion of their hearts, they dash their lives against the eternal law and fall and break by their own violent mass. The middle path is made for thinking man. To choose his steps by reason's vigilant light, to choose his path among the many paths is given him for each his difficult goal. Hewn out of infinite possibility. Leave not thy goal to follow a beautiful face. Only when thou hast climbed above thy mind and lived in the calm vastness of the One, can love be eternal in the eternal bliss, and love divine replace the human tie. There is a shrouded law an austere force. It bids thee strengthen thy undying spirit. It offers its severe benignancies of work and thought and measured grave delight as steps to climb to God's far secret height. Then is our life a tranquil pilgrimage, each year a mile upon the heavenly way. Each dawn opens into a larger light. Thy acts are thy helpers. All events are signs. Waking and sleep are opportunities given to thee by an immortal power. So canst thou raise thy pure, unvanquished spirit till spread to heaven in a wide vesper calm. Indifferent and gentle as the sky, it greatens slowly into timeless peace. But Savitri replied with steadfast eyes, My will is part of the eternal will. My fate is what my spirit's strength can make. My fate is what my spirit's strength can bear. My strength is not the titans, it is God's. I have discovered my glad reality beyond my body in another's being. I have found the deep, unchanging soul of love. Then how shall I desire a lonely good or slay aspiring to white vacant peace, the endless hope that made my soul spring forth out of its infinite solitude and sleep. My spirit has glimpsed the glory for which it came, the beating of one vast heart in the flame of things, my eternity clasped by his eternity, and tireless of the sweet abysms of time, the possibility always to love. This, this is first, last joy, and to its throb, the riches of a thousand fortunate years are poverty. Nothing to me are death and grief or ordinary lives and happy days. And what to me are common souls of men or eyes and lips that are not Satyavans? I have no need to draw back from his arms and the discovered paradise of his love and journey into a still infinity.
Only now for my soul in Satyavan I treasure the rich occasion of my birth. In sunlight and a dream of emerald ways I shall walk with him like gods in paradise. If for a year, that year is all my life. And yet I know this is not all my fate. Only to live and love a while and die. For I know now why my spirit came on earth and who I am and who he is I love. I have looked at him from my immortal self. I have seen God smile at me in Satyavan. I have seen the eternal in a human face. Then none could answer to her words. Silent they sat and looked into the eyes of fate.